this is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. You know, he's fought, he stepped up, he fought Matt Korobov, a decently slick boxer who doesn't have the range or the height that I do. Um, and then he fought Andre Durrell, who's, uh, you know, been a little bit past his prime and, um, you know, not not exactly the best matchup for someone like a strong, rough, rugged Jose who keeps coming forward. I'm not old. I'm not uh, mentally wore down. I'm not mentally weak. I do have the mental fortitude. Um, but I can sit there and tell you guys everything that I think, just like Jose can sit there and tell you everything he thinks. Um, you guys have certain questions of your own. The only way to find out is come January 13th. So. Um, who's Kategi? You were supposed to fight him in the summer, and then you heard you your hand injury. Yeah. Do you think the extra time benefits you overall? Because it's been a little while since March since you've been in the ring. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was in the ring this past last February. So uh, once fight time rolls around, it'll almost be right at a year that I've been out. Um, some people would look at that as, as a bad thing. But me, myself, uh, I don't expect there to be any ring rust whatsoever. I've been in the gym. Uh, you guys see me around. I, I stay in the gym. I've been here nonstop. And when I hurt my hand, it wasn't just an opportunity for me to rest or sit on the sidelines and watch everyone else. I use that opportunity as a, for a time to get better. You know, I use that. Uh, I try to use my time wisely. I didn't just want to sit around and, and wait for things to get ramped back up. I stayed in the gym. I stayed in the weight room. Um, I worked on things, trying to tighten up and sharpen a few tools. And uh, come January 13th, I think you guys will see what we've been working on. Kentucky has kind of hung out in uh, Vegas a lot. Uh, what do you think of him? Because I see there's been a lot of trash talking. Uh, even his uh, agent, Sean Gibbons, just told me, like, thank Corky Medina. Yeah. Uh, but what do you just think of him as a person um, and any interaction you can have with him before this fight with us? Uh, I mean, I'm not Andre the Real. Right? Yeah. So everyone thinks of Andre Durrell and they see the dude who was knocking everyone out when he first turned pro, the Olympian, things of that manner. Um, people who really know boxing know there's a lot more to it than just that Andre Durrell as time has went on. So he's right. He's not for Medina. He's Jose. But I'm Caleb Plant. He's never fought me. So uh, I don't really know him on too much of a personal level. I just know he's in the way of something I've worked for my whole life. Something that I've, you know, sacrificed a lot for. Something that I've, I've lost a lot working towards trying to get. And um, this is not just my career, it's not just my job, this is my life. So anyone in the way of that, it's kind of personal to me. Not to the point where I'm going to just bash him and be super disrespectful, but this is personal to me. Boxing is a personal sport. So, we're going to figure out all the answers soon. This is Dante's Boxing Nation, man. I've been watching you for a long time, man. You're a true warrior, in, indeed, man. And you've been working very hard. Every time I've seen you, you've been working hard. What is this specific victory going to mean to you and for your career? And is this the biggest fight of your career? Absolutely. Uh, this is my life's work coming down to one moment. All the things that have happened in the ring, all the things that have happened out of the ring, um, whatever it may be, all those moments have prepared me for this moment. And um, I'm confident. I feel like a lot of people um, in the situation that I'm in, maybe being out of the ring for a while, fighting the boogeyman of the division, that as the moment got closer, that it would get bigger, right? We get closer to the moment, we think, wow, it's getting bigger and bigger. But for me, the closer that I get to this moment, the smaller it's getting. So the how more do you, confident I'm getting. How so. do you actually condition your mental? We know how do you condition your body for the big moment, but how do you? How does a warrior and a, and a true champion condition their mental for the big moment? Um, you know, obviously the things that we know about not leaving stones unturned throughout camp, from the biggest to the smallest, um, that's going to give you confidence going in the mental, the mental edge and all that. But honestly, just the life that we go through, right. that prepares us mentally. That's the thing, the events that we go through through life, those are what make us the men that we are. Everything you've been through has made you the man that you are today. Everything you've been through has made you the man that you are today. Well, everything I've been through has made me the man that I am today. So. Do you think uh, Uskandagi usually likes to put pressure on guys? Is that the kind of style that brings the best out of you? Um, uh, 
this is a stylistic matchup, you know? It's the, what what people, at least on paper, what it seems like is it's the Bull versus the Matador. Right. And any time that there's a stylistic matchup like that, then it's, it's basically a, uh, a test of will. Who can impose their will on the other one? And uh, I think that type of stylistic matchup is going to bring the best out of both of those fighters. So uh, at, this, at that point, it's just who's going to impose their will on the other one. So. Do you think speed plays a big role in your, in your, in your fight game? That, that's going to play a big role in this fight? You have the faster hands, uh, faster feet? I have the fastest hands in the super middleweight division, period. I don't think anybody can argue with me on that. I got the fastest feet in the super middleweight division, period. Nobody can argue with that. I got the best footwork in the super middleweight division. Nobody can argue with that. I got the best defense in the super middleweight division and the best head movement. Nobody can argue with that. And I'm pretty sure most of you sitting here right now would say I also have the best IQ in the super middleweight division, hands down. So, he hits hard. Ernie Shavers hit pretty hard too, right? Is he ever a world champion? No, no. Okay. So, uh, the only way he's going to beat me is if he knocks me out. If he gets lucky and catches me with a big shot and knocks me out, then it'll be hand still. If that don't happen, it'll be hand the new. Period. That's it. It's, no one's feet are faster than mine. No one's footwork is better than mine. No one's defense is better than mine. No one's IQ is better than mine. No one's hand speed is better than mine. Nobody. You name one. Tell me. Hand speed? Hand speed? Yeah. I would say, if you're not faster than everybody, you're as fast as anybody in the division. So, but what's the matter with I? Who cares? Yeah. So, uh, you got fight. All he's got is, is some pop. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's got that. What about timing? Do you think he has? Uh, he's got a decent timing as well. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Don't let me cut him short. You know what I'm saying? He's got decent timing as well. Uh, he tries to time people. He tries to punch with you. He tries to catch you as you're doing stuff like that. So he, he's got good timing as well. But I got good timing too. So, in a, in a fight this big, is it hard not to overdo yourself during training camp because of the moment? Yeah, sometimes, uh, especially me, all you guys, you've seen me around. I love being in the boxing gym. There's no other place I'd rather be than the boxing gym. And um, I also know that you guys know how serious I take this. So when it's a, something, a moment of this magnitude, it's easy to get caught up and just want to go, 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 go. And people from Jordan to Luis to my dad to Justin to Larry Wade, my strength and conditioning coach, um, Don House, my cup man, everyone having to pull on the leash a little bit because I would just go and go and go and go and go. And, go. and uh, I guess that'd be a better problem to have than the alternative, which is to someone always having to push you. Um, but luckily, I got a great team around me, an experienced team, people who have been around for a long time in the sport. And so, so they know when to continue to let me off my leash and just keep going and going. But they also know when to tug on it a little bit and say, hey, let's rest a little bit. How uh, important is it to get off to a quick start, being that he is the bull, as you were saying, and you don't want him to get extra confident early on, you know what I mean, as far as landing power shots? Um, We'll have to see. You know, I've said this in other interviews. We can sit here and say, I can sit here and tell you this is what I'm going to do. This is what I have to do. But boxing, how other people compare it to life, boxing's like life. We plan for a lot of things in life. And how often does that work out? But when it gets tossed in your lap, you have to make adjustments. And that's something that I feel like boxing is losing is the ability for people to make adjustments. Um, so, you know, when the bell rings, the story will be told. Just because a frustrated fighter usually makes more mistakes, and I'm sure you want him to fall into that trap. Yeah. Uh, I mean, January 13th. Also. <laughs> <laughs>